comes to the Leopard tanks, there is no new, there's no news yet. There will be a decision very soon. I have already said in Ramstein that the partner countries who have Leopard tanks to already start the training for these tanks. Wir selbst können das aber naturgemäß erst machen, wenn unsere Entscheidung zum Umgang mit den Leopard-Panzern gefallen ist. Ein zweiter Punkt in dem Kontext, die... But we still have to decide when it comes to the Leopard 2 tanks last Friday. I asked the German military to check, to check on these Leopard 2 tanks. And I'm repeating it. Uh, this again. It's not about counting our tanks. We know how many we have. It is about asking the industry about the potential and the compatibility of the Leopard tanks. Because with the different types of these types of tanks, we have to check whether the different parts are together, and this has to be decided beforehand. So this kind of preparation is important, and it takes time before a positive decision, and then we will be able to act quickly. And I want to say again, it is not like it is written so often that there is some sort of dispute or that Germany is isolated. The decision process is just different in different countries. At the meeting in Ramstein, we have shown we have seen that other countries have also been very careful, like Germany, and some others are more quick to act. But Germany is dedicated to avoid that disputes are created, we shouldn't, and we do agree that this is just an impression, the alliance is together. Ladies and gentlemen, Jens, I'm delighted to have you here today so soon. We, uh, saw each other and uh, now let's listen to NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. We've been almost 10 years now, so we have met before, but it was nice for you to come here and to discuss some questions and to get to go know each other at a personal level. But apart from that, of course, we had an agenda that we needed to go through, a lot of uh, topics to discuss, and uh, we did that today. It is about... Uh, collective defense, uh, deterrence and defense, the eastern flank, and of course our support for Ukraine. All these are important subjects. And uh, we can uh, state that 11 months ago, Putin started his unprovoked, brutal and imperialistic war of aggression against Ukraine. And uh, we agree that, of course, NATO must not be one of the warring parties. That must stay as it is. But we must support Ukraine, and that's what we do. And uh, we must uh, show our unity against uh, the outside world, our unity in our dealings with Ukraine, because that is the attacked party and we support them. And also we must show our unity with regard to Russia, the aggressor, the aggressor in this case, and we must show our determination. That is very important. Germany is one of the leading countries here. Apart from humanitarian support, we have uh, provided uh, military support and we are in the top group of supporters for Ukraine. We have, provided a, we have prepared a spring package for 2023 comprising infantry fighting vehicles, bridge layers, the Patriot systems and other, other equipment uh, compi comprising 1.1 billion euros and uh, in total we have provided 3.3 so we are apart from the United States and the United Kingdom we are one of the po top supporters and that is often forgotten in the public discussion and uh, we have received a lot of support from my colleagues Lloyd Austin and Sebastian Le Cornu, for example 
We are now halfway between the two meetings, the summit meetings in Madrid and Vilnius, which will be in June. And we are going to continue to implement the turning point that was announced by our Chancellor. We must meet the capability targets and uh, live up to our promises. I'm looking forward to cooperating with you on that matter and in three weeks time we will meet at the NATO Defense Ministers meeting in Brussels. Now let me make one more remark because there will be questions about that anyway. Of course the discussion about the Leopard tanks. I can tell you there is uh, no new information here. The situation has not changed and uh, we are preparing our decision which will come very soon. As I pointed out in Rammstein, we enc are encouraging our partners if they want to and if they have the possibility to start training on uh, these uh, Leopard vehicles if they wish to do so. We're not stopping anyone. But as I said, we are preparing our decision. Then secondly, as I announced last Friday, we are locking into the matter what the current status is regarding our Leopard tanks. And of course, it's not just a matter of counting our tanks. We know how many we have. It's a lot more complicated than that. We need to look at uh, the potential we have, that industry has, the stocks that they have, and of course, compatibility. That is often forgotten. That is an important matter because the different types of Leopard vehicles must be compatible and it's important to look into the matter what can be combined with what also when you think of matters such as logistic support, repair and supplies. And we're preparing that to be in a position to act fast when the situation arises. Secondly, it is often said that there's a lack of unity amongst the Allies or that Germany is isolated, but that is not the case. And I call upon everyone, and that was made clear in, at our meeting in Rammstein, not to uh, create that impression that there's uh, this division through the alliance. There are some partners that uh, are still evaluating their decision and others want to go a bit faster, but we are not ununited. So this is a process that is ongoing. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me underline that NATO stands together and we're going to cooperate. Okay, Minister uh, Petorius, uh, De Boris, uh, thank you so much for the warm uh, welcome and uh, thank you for a very good uh, meeting and uh, uh, congratulations on your appointment. Uh, uh, you have been a member of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly for many, many years. I know that you are a staunch supporter of Alliance and I uh, look very much forward to working with you. Uh, you are taking up your position at a time when we again see a full-fledged war in Europe, creating the greatest danger to our security in generations. That is why German leadership is more important than ever. The bravery of uh, the Ukrainian forces has inspired the whole world. At the same time, we should not underestimate uh, Russia. President Putin has proved that he is willing to pay a high price for this unjust war. He has mobilized over 200,000 troops and is acquiring new weapons from other authoritarian regimes such as Iran and North Korea. But most importantly, we have no indication that President Putin has changed his goals. He wants to control Ukraine and is planning new offensives. The only way to lasting peace is to make it clear to Putin that he will not win on the battlefield. Therefore, we must provide heavier and more advanced systems so, so that Ukrainian forces are able to repel the Russian forces, not only to survive, but to win take back territory and prevail as a sovereign independent state in Europe. Germany is among the allies providing the most military, financial and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. This includes air defense uh, systems such as Gepard and RST, artillery and ammunition. You have recently also announced the delivery of advanced Patriot systems and modern infantry fighting vehicles. 
Weapons from Germany are saving lives in Ukraine every day. Protecting homes, schools and hospitals from Russian missile strikes. Other NATO allies are also stepping up. The United States announced in Rammstein on Friday another substantial package of 2.5 billion US dollars, including many Bradley and Stryker infantry fighting vehicles and more long uh, range fires and modern air defense systems. And France, uh, the United Kingdom, and other allies have announced that they will deliver tanks. I welcome these announcements. At this pivotal moment in the war, we must provide heavier and more advanced systems to Ukraine. And we must do it faster. I therefore welcome our discussion today. We discuss the issue of battle tanks. Consultations among allies will continue, and I'm confident that we will have a solution soon. Germany plays a key role in our alliance. The Seitenwende announced by Chancellor Scholz is historic. With a special 100 billion euro defense fund for fifth generation aircraft, new helicopters, ships, tanks and ammunition. You are already one of the biggest troop contributors to NATO's missions and operations. You lead NATO forces in Lithuania, your jets patrols allies skies, and 15,000 German troops are committed to NATO's rapid response forces. This significantly contributes to strengthen of deterrence and defense. So, Minister Petorius, uh, thank you again for our excellent uh, meeting uh, and for very fruitful uh, discussions. I look forward to welcoming you uh, to our Defence Ministerial meeting in Brussels next month. Thank you. So we have time for two more questions. Mr. Hoffmann from the UK first. Ah, here is the microphone. Herr Generalsekretär, wie entscheidend ist aus Ihrer Sicht die Frage, ob Kampfpanzer geliefert werden für den First question for Stoltenberg. How decisive for the war in Ukraine is the delivery of these Leopard 2 tanks? Herr Minister, Sie haben eine laufende Bestandsaufnahme. Sie haben es ja auch schon angesprochen. Is there a danger that the Ukrainians could be beaten by the Russians? And question for Boris Pistorius, the Germany's uh, new defense minister. Secretary General, could you tell us uh, how... Is there a possibility that there are enough tanks that are delivered to Ukraine? The outcome of the war is the danger of Ukraine being run over by Russian forces. And then a question regarding uh, the, te the current uh, review that is uh, going on in the Bundeswehr. Has it been possible to identify whether the Bundeswehr has uh, main battle tanks to provide? Battle tanks are, of course, important, uh, both to be able to repel uh, Russian uh, new offensives, but also for Ukraine to be able to retake uh, territory, to, to win and to uh, prevail as a sovereign independent nation in, uh, in Europe. At the same time, we need uh, to understand that uh, allies have already decided to uh, deliver uh, both battle tanks, but also to deliver more uh, armored vehicles, including uh, infantry fighting vehicles. So what we need is heavier, more modern equipment. And that's exactly what allies have already announced to, to deliver. Uh, Germany has announced to deliver um, uh, uh, modern infantry fighting vehicles. Uh, the United States has uh, decided to deliver uh, many Bradleys and, and Strikers uh, and also other types of armored vehicles. Canada, other allies are also stepping up with different types of armored uh, vehicles and infantry fighting vehicles. Then some allies have already delivered battle tanks, including some of our eastern uh, allies. Uh, France has announced that they will deliver uh, a light battle tank. And then uh, the United Kingdom has announced that they will deliver uh, modern uh, main battle tank, the Challenger 2. Uh, so if you put all of this together, uh, the German announcements, uh, the announcement from other allies of a wide range of different types of armor to Ukraine, this is a huge additional uh, contribution to the combat capabilities of uh, Ukraine. And this is urgent, this is important, uh, because Russia is preparing for new offensives. We need to enable uh, the Ukrainians uh, soon or fast to, to be able to 
repel uh, those uh, offensives and also enable them uh, to retake, uh, liberate their own uh, territory. Then we had the good discussion today uh, on the issue of uh, German uh, battle tanks. Uh, and uh, I'm confident that uh, there will be uh, a solution uh, soon. And, uh, and uh, I welcome also the clear message from uh, the minister uh, that uh, uh, other allies, other NATO allies that have uh, uh, Leopard battle tanks uh, are of course free to identify uh, those Leopard battle tanks that may be available for Ukraine uh, to make them ready, but also to start training of Ukrainian crews for those battle tanks. Because after the decision has been taken on delivery of battle tanks, uh, it will take some time to identify, to make ready, and, uh, and to train Ukrainian crews. And I welcome the clear message from uh, Minister Pretorius that uh, uh, allies with Leopard battle, battle tanks are actually urged to uh, start that work. Zu der anderen Frage, ähm, der Bericht ist noch nicht abgeschlossen. Er ist in der Endphase, wie ich mir heute Morgen noch habe sagen lassen. Und ich bitte um Verständnis, dass ich gerne mit belastbaren Aussagen... The report is not finished yet. Mit Wasserständen, von daher... I don't want to say anything that is not yet sure, 100 percent, so I cannot respond when it comes to the numbers yet. Mr. Pistorius, you said many times that this row over German battle tanks is overshadowing Germany's undoubtedly large contribution to the war effort in Ukraine. If that's the case, why is Chancellor Scholz being so ineffective in his communication style, and does that not frustrate you? Mr. Stoltenberg, how frustrated are you by this row over German battle tanks and the risk that that will create some, at least the impression of a lack of Western unity? The communication of the Chancellor, I don't think there's a reason to criticize it. He's very calm. And he tries to take into account everything. And it's not my role to comment on my role of the Chancellor's behavior or communication style. I think there's nothing to be criticized here. He has a reserved and calm way. And he does what any uh, leader should do, namely to bring the different positions together. The most important thing is that uh, Jean-Jean Scholz uh, and also Minister Petelius, they are absolutely right when they point out the significant contributions uh, Germany has delivered and continue to deliver to Ukraine. That's actually substance that matters and makes a difference on the battlefield every day. The fact that Germany is the, uh, uh, one of the allies that are providing the most support when it comes to artillery, ammunition, uh, advanced air defense systems, the Gepards, the RST, uh, and, uh, and also now uh, heavy infantry fighting vehicles, the Martyrs. These are, uh, uh, these are uh, important armored capabilities that significantly strengthen the uh, combat capability of uh, Ukraine. And therefore I agree uh, with, uh, with the Chancellor and also the Minister that actually we need to remember and recognize uh, these significant German uh, contributions. Then other allies are providing similar capabilities, air defenses, uh, uh, armored vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles, and some allies also providing uh, battle tanks. Then we have a discussion uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, the Leopards. Uh, and, uh, and I think that's a kind of natural part of uh, an evolving uh, uh, policy when it comes to exactly what kind of capabilities uh, we should deliver to uh, Ukraine. And I think it's important also to protect the space uh, for confidential consulta consultations among allies. Uh, that's part of being an alliance of 30 allies. And actually, we're also working with a lot of partners, as we did in Rammstein, uh, to consult, uh, to assess, and then uh, uh, to make uh, decisions in close consultation. Uh, and also, uh, I welcome, of course, the message from the minister that uh, there will be a conclusion soon because time matters. And big announcements were made last week, uh, and, and there will be new announcements uh, as we move uh, forward uh, as an alliance. If you're just joining us, we're live in Berlin, where Germany's new defense minister said a decision has still not been made on whether the country will supply leopard tanks to Ukraine. 
Kiev has been calling on the West to provide uh, these German-made tanks, uh, which they say will help them defeat Russia. But Germany has appeared reluctant to do so, saying it does not want to escalate the war with Russia. Thanks for tuning in and stay with us for more on the story.